I had a question about how to miter an interior corner. Now on most of your quilts, your corners would be an exterior corner like this, but in this case it's an interior corner. So uh, this works for both corners that are inside and for scallops. So if you had a scallop, it would be the interior point on your scallop right here. First of all, you want to use a very narrow binding strip. This one is actually too wide. This was cut at two inches and it's still too wide for this process. You don't want a wide binding on anything that has an interior corner or a scallop and you'll see why. Now if it's a scallop, you absolutely have to use a um, bias binding. For a corner like this, you wouldn't have to use a bias binding but you will find it easier to manipulate if you do because the bias has stretch to it and it's easier to fold into position. So to do the interior corner, I um, use a quarter inch seam allowance and so I've stitched down here. But before I um, sewed all the way to the corner, what I did was from this edge right here, I used my ruler and I marked exactly where my seam allowance should be here on the binding strip. So I had a mark right here so I knew where to stop. So it's a quarter inch seam allowance down here, stop at my mark, back stitch, stop and take it off the machine. Now on the quilted portion of it, not on my binding, but on the quilted portion of it, I want to go to the back side and use my scissors and snip right up to that stitching point right there. So now I have an opening here, so you can see how that's been snipped away there. You don't want to snip your binding, and you don't want to um, snip into your stitches. So now I'm going to put it back on my machine and put my needle right here, so I can start here and sew up to that point. Now that I have it snipped, I can take this and fold this around to make it straight my hand out of the way there. So I folded the fabric back to make this straight along here. Now um, you want your needle in the machine right there at the corner. You want so that your needle's holding it in place and then you kind of have to play with this fabric a little bit to get it to lay smooth like that. But you'll be able to line this up and then just stitch straight across there. And the reason that you can do that is because you've cut that slice in there and it's going to open up to be a V like that. So you're going to stitch it down the rest of the way and it will be stitched right around the corner here like this. Now you're going to fold it to the back and this I've done this corner for you so you can see this is your regular exterior corner and I folded it back and then down and mitered that corner and you can see that little miter that's right there so that's a perfect little miter now it's also a perfect miter here on the back but see how much wider this is on the back when you're doing a regular quilt in an exterior corner that sometimes doesn't matter Technically speaking, for um, judging purposes, your binding should always be the same width on the front as it is on the back. But if this didn't have interior corners and I was going to stitch in the ditch, I might want it a little longer on the back to make sure that I could catch it. But for an interior corner like this one, you want to have a very narrow binding and here's why. It's gonna come down here and once this was um, stitched like this, then I folded it to the back and then I can use my um, scissor tips, get in there and just miter that. I haven't cut anything. I've just tucked that back in there so that it makes a nice miter here on the front. When you're stitching, and I'm assuming if you're doing this type, you would be hand stitching the binding on the back. You would be sewing along here. You would take a few stitches in that miter, a few stitches in the miter on the back, continue down to here and you would stitch this. Now on the back you can see it doesn't make a nice miter here because this is too wide. If it was narrower I would be able to bend this over and it would make a nice mitered corner and you would see an angle there. 
So it would align it would align up this way and this way. But because it, the binding is self is too wide, it's too wide on this end to bend around. So you need a narrow binding, but that's how you would bind an interior corner.